And one of the arrangements of those 64 hexagrams is really a binary code. Uh, Leibniz, the brilliant mathematician who worked seven years uh, developing the binary code, which is what computers run on, was bummed out when he found out the Chinese had scooped them by about 2,000 years. <laughs> so here is the cover story the car for the Scientific American, 1974, on the mathematics of the I Ching. I read it to say that I read it. Uh, those of you that are really into math, uh, might have a look at it. And here's the binary arrangement of the hexagrams, starting with zero in the lower right-hand corner and going to uh, 63 at the top. The present arrangement in the Jing, nobody knows how we got that particular sequence of hexagrams. Now, one of the amazing things about this book, and I'll go through this quickly. I'm sure most of you know how to use it. Um, if you don't, uh, ask some questions of people at your table. I'm sure you have somebody that knows how to do it. So, the easiest way to consult it is uh, you have a question about something that's really important in your life, and while you're thinking of your question, you take like three pennies or three dimes, and you give heads a value of uh, three, tails a value of two, you toss your three coins out, tally it up, and there are four possible numbers that you can get, six, seven, eight, or nine. So all tails, two, 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 six, all heads, three, 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 nine, combinations of the two, seven, and eight. Uh, then the, the first number is related to the bottom line of the hexagram. So you plug in the lines uh, uh, based on that code. And the nine is called, uh, well, first of all, the broken lines are called yin lines. They're kind of archetypal feminine, moist, containing. The solid lines are yang, a firm, outgoing, dry, and so on. So if you drive the yin to the extreme, then it goes from containing to smothering, and from passive, from receptive to passive, and so on. So the old yin, the six, is going to break down to its opposite and become a young yang. And if you drive the yang to its excessive, it's going to go from firm to being brittle and, and, and harsh. Uh, and from uh, light to being um, uh, overpowering and so on. Now I seem to have lost one of the uh, descriptors there, but um, that's your brief introduction on how to consult the gene. Got a question, toss the coins out six times, tallied up, converted to numbers, and then, oh I forgot one thing, one important thing is what you do is you change what are called the changing lines, the sixes or the nines, to their opposite. So if you look at what I have here, a nine in the first place, uh, that's an old yang, that's a changing line. Uh, it'll change into its opposite, a broken line, a yin. The six in the second place from the bottom is a changing line. It'll go from being an uh, old yin to a young yang. The other lines stay as they are, the unchanging lines, and that's how you get your second hexagram. The first hexagram, in this case 22, is considered to be where you are right now with regard to your present issue, and the second hexagram where you are going to be at some point with regard to that very issue. So, uh, I, can, I call the uh, Jing to be the ultimate self-help book. It's like being able to get the wisdom of Chinese sages for whatever problem that you are having. And it doesn't exclude uh, psychotherapy because the Jing will often say uh, that you need help and to uh, see somebody for advice. So there's, there's a place for Jungian analysts within the Jing world. <laughs>